You know that was Giants head coach Jim Fossil 18 <laughs> years ago. Still gets me going. It was right around this point in the season. Fossil guaranteeing that his struggling GMAT would make the playoffs. Sure enough, they rattle off five straight wins to get the NFC's top seed. Now, why are we hearing this cool acoustic jam? Because with four games left on the schedule, this is where the playoff teams separate from the pack. And it's a long December for the teams who get left out in the cold. Oh, wow. Not August and everything after. That's a different segment, different time of year. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the division leaders out of the equation. Each one of us here at the table, we're going to take a team. We're going to really adopt a team who is fighting for a wild card spot. And then we're just going to ride them. Ride them win or lose the next four weeks because we have reason to believe <laughs> that they will end up in the postseason. Normally, it's Anna that begins. This time, it'll be Peter. Nice. What do you think, Peter? Who's your team? For the long December. Schrager hits the atmosphere. There are so many Counting Crows references we can do. I love them all. But I'm going to get serious here. All right. The Vikings went to the NFC Championship game last year. And then they decided that their quarterback wasn't up to snuff. And they needed to change that quarterback to get them over the hump. They went out and they paid $90 million to a guy who had never won a big playoff game in his career. That guy's Kirk Cousins. And this weekend, they go to Seattle in a Monday night game where everybody in America will be watching. Not just to see who will win, but to see what that quarterback is made of. We love Kirk Cousins on the show, but if he wants to erase any stigma to his name, if he wants to erase any negativity hovering around that salary, the long December is when he's going to do it. Let's look at the Vikings schedule real quick here. Here's my pep talk to Kirk Cousins and that Vikings offense. At Seahawks, the 12th man? No, 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 no. You make it your man. Dolphins coming into your building? You got to beat Ryan Tannehill head to head. You got to find a way. At Lions? No, you can't lose that game. You have to win that one. And then lastly, the Bears. The Bears in your building. The Bears who have perennially been at the cellar since you have gotten in the league, Kirk Cousins. The Bears that the Vikings have owned the last few seasons. The Bears that should not be dominating that division the way they are. This was supposed to be the Vikings season. This was supposed to be Kirk Cousins' year. This was supposed to be the season that Minnesota turned it around. Yeah. Right now, the Vikings, they're just another mediocre squad in the group of many. It's time for the Vikings to forget what's happened thus far and to use December as their reason to believe. Let's go. Hey. Okay. You're taking right. them under your wing. Vikings okay. are my team. Let's go, Vikings. Maybe this year will be better than the last. That's under my wing. That's the Vikings under my wing. All right. That's it. All right. Adams, who are you going to adopt? Let's see. Uh, the past three weeks, I gotta say, I am accidentally in love with the Broncos. Okay. And Shrek they soundtrack. are doing beating great teams, and they've had such a tough schedule. Why do I love the Broncos? Why am I adopting them as my December team? Let me count the ways. It all starts with their defense, of course. Chris Harris injury, not a good thing. But Von Miller is on a seven-game sack streak. He's doing his thing, and when he's not, Bradley Chubb is doing it. Their rookies and their veterans are balancing each, each other out. And Case Keenum's playing way differently than we've seen him play recently. Eight straight games with interceptions to start the season. The last four, he hasn't thrown a single one because he's trusting people. He's doing his thing. He's giving it to Philip Lindsay, who's incredible. We could say all the things we love about him, and he leads the league in yards per carry. When they gave him the game ball, Shrags, he gave it to his offensive line. I love that. There's everything this kid does is amazing, and he's going to be huge for them in making a playoff run. Lastly, their schedule has been brutal this season. They had to face the Rams. That was a loss. Chiefs twice. But it's all going to pay off because this is their remaining schedule. they got to go to the 49ers. No, Matt Breed is out. I, don't, I think they'll win this one easily. Browns at Raiders and Chargers. They could win out. And having that hard schedule, they're still sitting at 6-6 six and six with two huge wins over the Chargers on the road and against the Steelers, and just this past week. So I feel like with that schedule, they're going to make a run. They have what it takes. Okay. All right, let me jump in. And they're playing, like they're, they're around, they're playing for their coach. Like you okay. can just see it right. the past couple weeks. Let me jump in. I'm going with my former team, the Seattle Seahawks. You talked about Bobby Wagner earlier in the show, and you said he is his own legion of boom. I mean, with that pick six and fill up the stat box, he is the anchor of that defense. So that defense is heating up. And of course, that offense is fantastic. I mean, it, it really doesn't get better than what they're doing per game, rushing the ball, averaging 148 yards. That leads the NFL. And how about Russell Wilson? Russell Wilson, 24 TDs, just two interceptions in the last 10 games. You're saying, Nate, well, that's the last 10 games. 
Oh, I'm glad you said that. You want to talk about the month of December? Yeah. Russell Wilson, the month of December, since 2012, only Tom Brady has more wins. Tom Brady, the goat. <laughs> okay? But Russell Wilson, the month of December, here's something Tom Brady doesn't have. He has the highest passer rating since 1970. Yeah, that's Russell Wilson, 103.3. Now let's talk about this schedule, the remaining schedule, if you will. They play Minnesota, okay, at home. You got the 49ers, that's a winnable game. You have the Chiefs at home, and then the Cardinals at home. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Seattle. It's a tough place to play, mm -hmm. especially this time of year. It gets a little chilly. Mm -hmm. You have Russell Wilson, who's so good, and that defense, oh, that defense starts playing so well. So I wrote a little something, a little poem. Here we go. Will. Let's do it. Can I have my camera? Here we go. Take this, Adam Duritz. A little spoken word about my Seahawks. As the weather gets colder, our defense gets stronger. Your big plays become shorter. Our drives become longer. And for the Seahawks, this will be a month to remember because nobody is better than Russell Wilson in the month of December. Oh. Let's go, Seahawks! That's Let's great. go! People thought Mrs. Potter's lullaby was well written. That that trumped that. Let's go. Let's Up go in Seahawks. Seattle, that would You're make right. you that would make you the rain king, right? Yeah. 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 I would I would adopt <laughs> oh the Seahawks based on celebrations alone. Celebrations for, for the month. Macarena. Production, Killing. baby. I felt like that poem took us to a cool bar and playing drums with a brush. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm on bleak street. Not bad, right? Mm -hmm. Turtleneck. Yeah. Uh, all right, woman. Whoa, man. I'm gonna go down. Uh, <laughs> yes. Let's go from Seattle down to the South Beach. I'm gonna take the Miami Dolphins okay. because why not? I'm gonna give a little perspective for people outside of their devoted fan base. What the deal is with the Miami Dolphins? No one cares about you. No one watches your game. No one talks about you. You are the gum on the bottom of the AFC playoff picture shoe. The only reason you're in the conversation is mathematics. That's keeping you in it. Uh, people probably think your most famous player on the team right now is Dan Marino, if it's not Endomic and Sue. Um, they don't really care about other than 20-year-old Will Smith songs and 30-year-old Don Johnson TV shows. What they're not remembering about you Miami Dolphins is one-year-old Patriots beatdowns, two-year-old 10-win seasons. No one hear about that. Don't even talk about it. Don't even talk about how you beat the the Bears this year with your backup quarterback that you pulled off the streets. And nothing is better about this team than the steely gaze of their head coach, Adam Gase. This is everything to me. You know, Adam Gase was told recently, he said, you know, Coach Gase, you guys are 29th in offense right now. You're 29th. You know what he said? He goes, great. Next question. Great. That is exactly what I want from this team. No one cares. The numbers aren't right. They beat the Patriots every time the Patriots come to Miami, almost every time. And I love that. They are king slayers when the Patriots come to Hard Rock Stadium, whatever the hell it's called. So here's what I'm going to say to you guys. I also think the Dolphins need a bit of a rebrand, all right? Okay. Dolphins, you're thinking Paul Hogan, Elijah Wood, and all that dumb song and all friendly. Do you know that the New York Times published an article about Dolphins talking about how there's growing evidence that Dolphins are, in fact, ruthless killers? Yeah. Dolphins have been found to Bludgeon really? porpoises to death by oh, the hundreds. Dolphins it. seem to have murderous urges unrelated to the need for food. That's the New York Times. Fake Adam, news? Read it. New York Times. No, I didn't write it. So this is what I'm saying. What? This is the kind of dolphin that we need. The angry one. The one that takes their cue from their head coach. I'm riding with them. I don't care that the Patriots are on the schedule. I'm behind Gase. You know what I say? Great. Yeah. Great. Did you have to really ruin dolphins no more, for me No then? more echo or Go flipper. Go to the Times. Write them a letter. Fins up. What a whole thing about the dolphins kill for pleasure. Just so no more, no more echo or flipper? No, get out of here. Echo. and echo, Peter, or Nate, echo Genesis game is great. Great game. I think it's fake news, though. I think these fake dolphins news. are out for blood. Free Willy, a dolphin or a whale? Yeah, whale. Killer whale. Whale. Yeah. Whale. Killer whale. Killer, Killer. Whale. 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 Make a circle in the sand. <laughs> make a halo with your hand. Miami. Great hey. song by the Counting Crows, by the way. Thank you still got more? No, I think that's it. Those are our four teams we're backing for the next month. That's it. Peter's got one, Nate's got one, Kay's got one, I've got one. The games go fast. We're going to check in, though, each week, see how we're holding up. Okay. Oh. Our, and we got snowmen. Now, if the teams start losing, <laughs> guess what's happened to the snowmen? They start melting. No, right? that makes me sadder hey. than the Why dolphins. Why is my snowman so small? No, Nate's is so small and tiny. What is going Why on? Why is Nate's wearing Carl Kanai? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> we'll see how the snowmen hold up. Kyle says Janko jeans on. What is yeah. going on? <laughs> Mine's cute. I, I like, like that one. We'll see. Philip Lindsay, cool too. We each have our team. No matter if they lose the next three, the next four, those are our snowmen. So if they lose, the snowman will start melting. Remember when Frosty starts melting, it gets real 
bad. Oh, oh, real dark. About the Bruce Willis movie? Yeah, yeah, sure, all of them, yeah. 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 That frosty one, oh, yes. <laughs> That's the one. Those are our guys. All I think about is a dolphin no. coming out of the water. Yeah, the they're going for blood. Oh, the dolphin from, yeah, that's an old It's one. a dolphin yes. coming out of the water. Good drawing. Uh, rough week for the Bengals. No other way to put it.